Hello everyone, welcome to experimental biochemistry course and today we, we are going to study the enzyme kinetics. Actually when substrate attaches to an enzyme it is degraded to form products. So basically enzyme acts on a substrate and substrate attaches to the active site of the enzyme. It is chemically acted upon by the enzyme, the substrate is actually chemically acted upon by the enzyme and it is degraded to form a completely different chemically uh, product. Okay. So, in today's study we are going to see how this phenomenon takes place in terms of spectrophotometric analysis. Before going into our experiment, I just want to give you a small example which we generally see in everyday life. I hope all of you are acquainted with apple. Okay. So, when you cut apple into small pieces and keep it open in dry air, actually what you see is that the yellowish part of the apple which is the inner part of the apple gradually gets converted into brown color and with gradual progress in time the color gets darkened and deep brown color is formed in the apple. So why this phenomenon takes place? The general concept lies in the fact that there are various types of phenolic compounds like catechol or other polyphenolic compounds present in the apple which are actually oxidized in presence of air and who oxidizes it? Generally molecular oxygen cannot carry out this oxidation until and unless and enzymes come in, comes into play. The enzymes which comes into play is actually catechol oxidase which is generally present in an apple. So this is an apple, so when we will cut it into pieces we can see that the color turns brownish with gradual exposure in air. So this catechol oxidase present in an apple is basically converting the substrate that is catechol into um, oxidized product which is actually benzoquinone. Now the phenomenon which we see in regular life we want to quantify it and see how the kinetics occur that is how fast or slow the reaction takes place. For that what we need? We need the enzyme, we need the enzyme from this apple. So we will see how we can carry out the extraction of that enzyme or basically the solution from this apple and number 2 is that we need the substrate and what is the substrate? It is catechol. So we will actually prepare a solution of catechol and we will add this uh, enzyme obtained from apple to wit and see how the kinetics or how the reaction gradually takes place using UV spectrophotometric techniques. In addition what we can do is that we can add one inhibitor. You have gone in your, you have seen in your theory classes that an inhibitor actually slows down or actually modifies the rate of the reaction or in certain cases actually stops the enzymatic reaction. So in our case we will apply any one of the enzyme or basically two enzymes actually it is uh, phenylthiourea number one and the other is para hydroxybenzoic acid. So we can see how this uh, chemical compounds acts on this enzyme and prevent the enzyme reaction. So let us proceed into our experimental procedures. So the substrate we are going to take is catechol, here this is catechol, this is the 100 gram catechol in a bottle. So we are going to prepare 20 millimolar of 50 ml catechol in phosphate buffer pH 7.4 solution. So keep in mind that all the solutions we are carrying out in this reaction, we are all the solution are preparing in this reaction, we are doing it in phosphate buffer pH 7.4 and the strength of the phosphate buffer you can actually vary from 10 millimolar to 20 millimolar or 25 millimolar. Generally all the physio uh, biological processes uh, are done with this concentration of phosphate buffer. Now we are going to take this spatula and we are uh, keeping in mind that the spatula should be clean. Actually we are cleaning this with a tissue paper and visually it is clean however we are again cleaning this with a tissue paper. And now we are going to take this catechol. Now we have calculated it for 20 millimolar and 50 ml catechol solution we require 0.11 gram catechol. So we are taking 0.11 gram catechol, here is the butter paper we have teared this and it is 0, 0 is showing ok. Initially we are adding a small amount of this catechol powder, these are catechol are generally crystals. Okay. 
Okay, so we have taken actually 0.1138 and uh, gram of catechol. So as we have said in the previous lectures that whatever is the calculated amount, the calculated weight, you can take a small amount a bit higher than this calculated weight. Okay. Now we have taken this clean falcon, this is a 50 ml falcon tube. So we have uh, dried it and properly cleaned it with double distilled water. So we will transfer this catechol uh, crystals. carefully into this falcon. Now after that what we will do? We will actually take this falcon and make up this volume up to 50 ml using phosphate buffer of pH 7.4 and strength either 20 or 10 millimolar. Basically here the phosphate buffer we have prepared out here is uh, 20 millimolar. So what we can do is that we can take half of this phosphate buffer and fill here up to 25 ml and then make up the rest of the volume with double distilled water so that the final concentration of phosphate buffer is 10 millimolar. You can actually keep 20 or 25 as per your wish. However, sometimes this concentration might affect the reaction. So we can try out this reaction with 10 millimolar of phosphate buffer initially. Now since this is a falcon tube and the mouth is quite uh, large, so we can actually add this one, transfer this one carefully. Once we have poured a small amount of this uh, phosphate buffer, you can stir it gently. For beginners, you can use actually a pipette or a, like a 10 ml pipette which we have uh, seen in the previous experimental classes. And here is the graduation we can see. We will pour up to 25 ml. Here, I have added 25 ml of phosphate buffer. And now, what we can do? We will actually stir this solution. so that this catechol dissolves in the phosphate buffer. Now we can see here there is no such crystals floating in this uh, solution, so it is completely dissolved. Now to this one we will be adding double distilled water. So the volume is actually, here we can see it is 50 ml. Okay. Again what I am suggesting for beginners, you can actually use pipette while pouring this double distilled water or buffer into this one. So here what we have made, we have made actually 20 millimolar of catechol solution. Now one thing is that uh, you could easily have added double distilled water, phosphate buffer and after that this catechol powder out here. And uh, what actually problem takes place in that case is that the volume correction may not be present in, in case where you have added the solid catechol after adding double distilled water. So always put the solid crystal, so whatever you have taken the solute, you usually take it in this falcon tube and then add the required solvent. Now we are going to prepare around 10 millimolar and 50 ml of the inhibitor. The inhibitor we are taking here is N-phenylthiourea. Okay? So this is uh, often referred to as PTU, you can uh, see. It. So this is actually a 25 gram bottle having solid N-phenylthiourea okay? and uh, the molecular weight is also mentioned with the molecular formula. So we are going to prepare around 10 millimolar and 50 ml phenylthiourea in the same procedure 
as previously we have done for catechol. Now we are going to prepare 10 millimolar of 50 ml phenylthiourea. For that we need 0 0.076 gram of PTU that is phenylthiourea. We have again taken this spatula. The spatula we have used previously, we have cleaned it properly with double diffusion water and then after that with a clean tissue paper, we have dried it and then again we are using it to take this phenylthiourea. We have again taken a clean butter paper out here. Please do not reuse the butter paper which we have taken for weighing a previous solute. So we have teared it, it is 0 0.00 gram. Now we are going to take a pinch of this phenylthiourea. Now this is 0 0.02 gram, we have to add a bit more. It is 0 0.03, 0 0.06 and now it again increased to 0 0.09. So what we have to do? We have to take a small pinch of this phenyl area out here and transfer it into another butter paper. So what you can do is that you can actually take this excess of uh, solid compound if it is transferred to the butter paper into the same container or otherwise you can actually omit it. Generally in this case we are not transferring it in this one because some contamination might be there. We are trying to avoid this because this should be pure the actual container. Now is 0 0.80, okay. 0 0.078 it is. Before transferring it, we are again closing this container properly. And now again we have taken a new falcon, washed it properly with double distilled water and if preferable you can actually rinse this one with phosphate buffer. The phosphate buffer you would be using for making this entire solution. So I have rinsed it previously with phosphate buffer as you can see the water droplets actually droplets are still here out. Now we will take this one phenylthiourea. and transfer it carefully. So here we have taken the solid phenylthiourea as we have you can see here the solid compound is there. Now again we will be adding phosphate buffer 25 ml of 20 millimolar that is page 7.4. Now we have to stir it. Here what we can see that the compound is not properly dissolving out here. So for that we need to add again double distilled water, so we have to change the concentration and increase the volume. So although it, we can see that it is not dissolving properly, but if we actually give it for sonication out here, that it, it will get dissolved after sonicating it for some time. Now 
we will give it for fornication. In the meantime, we will prepare another solution that is para hydroxybenzoic acid. The next inhibitor we can prepare is para hydroxybenzoic acid as here we can see in this bottle. So, we can use either of the two in inhibitors either PTU that is phenylthiourea or para hydroxybenzoic acid. Now, we are going to prepare this one, we are again going to prepare 10 millimolar of 50 ml of para benzoic, para hydroxybenzoic acid. For that we need 0 0.069 gram. Now, we have again taken this cleaned spatula and a fresh butter paper out here. And after tearing we are adding a small pinch of para hydroxybenzoic acid. Our aim is to get 0 0.069 or basically 0 0.7 or 0 0.07 actually. It is 0 0.03 and if we add a bit more. it is 0 0.053, it is 0 0.04069 now, it is 0 0.04069 and uh, a small pinch out here, again it has increased to 0 0.08, now we will again take another butter paper and we will transfer a bit from here. It is 0 0.074, we can take a small amount now it is 0 0.0703. We will again close this container and we have taken again a falcon, clean falcon. This is the falcon in which we will transfer this solid that is parahydroxybenzoic acid. We will carefully transfer this one. So, here we can see the para hydroxybenzoic acid is out here and again we will be adding 25 ml phosphate buffer. Here is the graduation. We will put this lid and we will stir it. Here we can see it is almost dissolved in the solution. A few particles are there which are actually floating in this uh, falcon tube. So, now if we make up this volume with double distilled water, we can actually see the complete solute dissolves out here. So, I have made up to 50 ml and now it has almost dissolved or rather completely dissolved in phosphate buffer. Now, we have prepared all the three types of solution, number 1 is catechol, number 2 is PTU and we have sonicated it a bit and here we can see that the color it is almost uh, soluble now, we do not see any such solid particles floating out here in this PTU solution and the third thing we have prepared is para hydroxybenzoic acid. Now, the main thing we require is the apple enzyme. So, the we will, so we will now prepare the apple extract by taking this fresh apple. So, from market we have to just get a fresh apple and let us see how to get the apple extract from here. Now, we are going to extract the apple juice or rather the apple extract from this apple. For that we need few things, number one 
if the fresh apple just bought from the market number 2 a knife okay clean knife be careful while using a knife and then number 3 a mortar pestle out here and number 4 a beaker where we'll transfer this apple extract a number 5 a cloth okay so instead of this mortar pestle you can also use a mixer grinder a juice mixer grinder that would be much more easy okay so let's proceed for this experiment so we have taken this knife we have cleaned it and now we are going to cut this apple carefully now we have taken out this fresh piece of apple as you can see this one is yellowish color but when you keep it in air for some time this color turns into brownish now we are going to make the small pieces out here and the small pieces we are going to put it in the mortar pestle try to make small pieces so that it will be better for grinding now we are again taking the previously cut pieces and making smaller fragments out here be careful while cutting this one here we can see it has uh, already started turning into slightly brownish acha eta na pad di do yo khante now here we can already see that a part of this apple the inner part has already started turning a bit brown okay so it is a regular experience we can see but many of us might not know the reason the actual reason is that the phenolic compounds are getting oxidized by the catechol oxidase enzyme and the enzyme is actually present in the apple now what we can do is that we can basically mix this one here we can see we have taken a bit large amount of apple out here this is apple we'll first grind this one using a pestle 
and then we will add the remaining pieces. So, the pestle what we have taken here will actually grind this one. It is better to grind with smaller pieces of apple. And while you have started grinding, add small amount of water. Now, once we have made a small amount of this apple extract as we have seen in the video, now we have we can add the remaining pieces. One thing which I basically experienced while doing this one and I would like to recommend you also, basically peel off the skin at first, the apple skin, you can basically peel this one off, remove this part having the skin of this apple and then make small pieces and then you can add those into the mortar. Again out here I will be removing the skin ok now I have removed the skin of this piece of apple out here I have removed as much as possible ok this one is there and again I will be making smaller pieces now I will again add double distilled water and grind it in the previous way. Now what we have got actually is something like this out here, here we can see the apple pieces and the liquid is actually the apple extract with the in present in water. Now we have to take out this extract using this cloth. So let us see how to take out this apple extract from here. Now we have taken this beaker okay, where we will take in the apple extract and a cloth and a piece of cloth out here. So we are keeping this piece of cloth on this beaker out here and in such a way that a part of this cloth goes inside. make it sure that the you are placing the sample in the mid of this cloth now out here we can see here is the apple extract we will again add some amount of water and we will transfer this in this cloth along with the entire thing we will transfer out here. Now after that we will fold this one and here already we can see a small amount of this liquid is present there in the beaker and we will actually press here such that 
the apple juice comes out in this way we have to take the apple extract again we can add small amount of water and press it such that we get the apple juice from here in this method what basically happens is that the remaining the the solid apple pieces are actually filtered out here and we can get the filtrate that is the apple juice out here we can see here this is actually almost clear solution almost clear so this is the filtrate and here in this cloth we have the solid apple residues which we will not use and we will discard this one and with this filtrate we will proceed to the to our analysis and we will dilute this filtrate a bit because this is highly concentrated we will dilute a bit and with this we will proceed to our enzyme kinetics analysis.